Good morning, Dr. Carrie Hepburn here, and this is video five of a five part video series that I've been creating um, based on some work that Compass PD, myself and my colleagues have been doing with districts on long range planning. So hopefully you've seen some of the videos already leading up to this final video, and I'll just quickly do a reminder of some of the things that we've talked about. In earlier, one of the first videos that we um, were doing, we talked about the sweet spot. And this was just something that I developed as I was working um, with uh, lots of different curricula and trying to help align best practices, district initiatives, and accountability, and then develop plans, especially professional learning plans and communication that aligned with the sweet, sweet spot because it helped just kind of streamline for the um, stakeholders that I supported um, in a variety of ways. And so this became one of the big key factors um, in the work that I did and, and being able to be successful in that work. The next thing that we talked about was Simon Sinek's work was starting with the why, then um, developing a vision statement, figuring out the what, and then um, going into the how. And so I've already talked a little bit about some of the how, and in that we talked briefly about uh, curriculum cycle, and we didn't get into details of it, but that's some work that we support, um, but helping this district quickly um, map out a curriculum cycle and then um, be able to see when purchasing and implementing would be happening so that they could spread out their resources of time and money to support that work. This particular cycle is um, for elementary. So you would typically have one at a district level for all of your curricula so that you're able to, um, you know, be wise with your spending. The only time you typically stray from your curriculum cycle is if new standards have come out or a new high stakes assessment or maybe new legislation that requires certain criteria to be hit within a curriculum. And we used that to develop, and this isn't necessarily, it's, it's sort of mostly in order, but um, this is a professional learning cycle that would align with the curriculum cycle. So like when you were in researching and pilot, piloting, this would be the time that you would wanna be looking at best practice for instructional methods, unpacking standards, creating progressions of learning, making sure that you're doing the why and the what. Then um, as you pilot, you would be doing, um, or as you implement, you would be doing product professional development. And then you would want to move into the next year implementing best practices and the product together and focusing like on um, questions one and two. And this was for this particular district. We can help districts that, you know, maybe they have different initiatives, but for this particular district, we were trying to align all of their work together. Then we talked about responsive teaching and coaching is going to be part of their curriculum cycle um, down the road. And we would focus on questions, PLC questions three and four. We would do this for two years. We know we need to do instructional strategies regularly and how that looks in content areas, assessment practices, PLCs. You can move things around, but you, you get the gist of the idea. We took all of that information and then we read research. When we work with these districts, we read research on what um, best practices are around adult learning and how to ensure that the learning is happening um, that we're like applying the learning. And so if you pull out Ed Leadership's February issue of 2021, it, there's an issue titled like uh, Professional Learning That Sticks. And there's some really great articles in there that I would highly recommend, but one specifically sticks out to me and it's by Jim Knight and it's called From Talk to Action. And it talks about how we do whole group professional learning and 
what happens is if we aren't implementing that professional learning within a couple of days, chances of actually implementing that learning is decreases drastically as time goes on. And so we were reading research as a team and we developed a plan that I think was really turned out beautiful. It aligns with the sweet spot, it aligns with the curriculum cycle, it aligns with the professional learning cycle, and um, it, it aligns with the why, the, the starting with the why work. And so I'm going to kind of jot this out for you, just a couple of the things that we had decided, and I think this is work that you could do as well. So we came up with what does whole group look like? So we um, decided that we felt comfortable as a team that we could get some learning in whole group. And so we wanted to start with priority standards because that was some big work that the district was wanting to do. And so what we know is that if we unpack standards, some of you may or may not know, but I love unpacking standards. It is incredibly powerful. The, the learning that happens for teachers, administrators, for myself, we talk about instructional implications, we talk about progressions of learning, like all the things. So we're going to start with um, unpacking standards and talking about the purpose of unpacking standards uh, with their priority standards. And that's going to take us 1.5 days. And um, we're going to do two full days and the teachers at this particular district need, haven't had any learning around like workshop model and balanced literacy. And we're going to briefly touch on that. So we're gonna do basics of workshop model and we're doing that, like I said, briefly in 0.5, half of a day. So we're spending two days doing that. So this is like on a Monday and Tuesday. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we're going in and doing small groups instruction um, and coaching. At Compass PD, we have an entire curriculum instruction and assessment department that they are experts, they're practitioners in their uh, respected fields, their respected content. So we're bringing people in to help create lab sites or learning labs for them. And what we're going to do is like one day for two hours for each grade level, we'll spend time in kindergarten, first and second. The next day, each, each grade level gets two hours each. So this is one day, this is, this is third, fourth and fifth, they get one day. And then this is two hours again with each grade level and it's sixth, seventh and eighth and they get one day. And in this one day, we are going to model, we're gonna teach teachers about the workshop model, okay? And so how we're, see, we just did the basics of workshop model on Monday and Tuesday, and we were unpacking priority standards. And in this mini lesson time, we are going to teach a teaching point aligned with the priority standard unpacking. So do you see how we just did that? So we took the plan, we're going to do some whole group teaching with kindergarten, actually early childhood through eighth grade on their priority standards. And then we're going to unpack those standards, do basic workshop model teaching, and then the next three days, we're going to show teachers how to actually apply it in their classrooms. Powerful. And so in this two hours, there will be a little bit of learning before we go into the classroom. We'll go into the classroom and then we'll model, and then the teachers get a chance to try it out right then too. So we're getting to see it in action and then try it out. Then we can't end there though, guys, we need to support our leaders. And so we're going to do some leadership work just around this, okay? And we want to bring in other potential leaders. So not just our principals and our instructional coaches, but teacher leaders. We need to build capacity. 
as much as I know you can do, it's the, we want to know that when we have to walk out or we can't be there, the work continues. And so this, this leadership work at this time is going to be on workshop model. And it's going to be, what does it look for, like for the teacher and what does it look like for the student? And then we will talk about data to collect to see if this is happening, right? And it's going to be very safe. It's hallway visits or hallway walks, whatever you wanna call it. During workshop model time, all you're going to do is do this. Take tallies, are they in whole group? Or are they in small groups? Down your hallways. Okay, and here's why this is important. This is whole group, the mini lesson. The share is whole group. All of this time here is small group instruction. So this is where the responsive teaching happens and where you make the most growth. So as you're collecting the data, you want to see more of this. And if that's not happening yet, that's okay. Because what we'll do next is touch on like mini lessons and how to, to do mini lessons. Now, we didn't just end there with this team. We also decided that in whole group, we were gonna do another whole group day. Okay. And we need to continue that work with priority standards. And this particular district had um, purchased Boston Pinnell. And um, what we wanted to do was align those priority standards with the literacy continuum. And kind of break it down for teachers because it is the literacy continuum is like one of the most amazing resources but it can be overwhelming. So we want to do things in small doses and small chunks to support our teachers. So we were gonna take a priority standard or two, align it with the literacy continuum. Then we were going to create proficiency scales on those standards and pull student work that align with the proficiency scales. Okay, that's whole group. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we're doing small group. Making, are you seeing it? How it all goes together and coaching, coaching in lab sites. Again, this will be K, this one will be pre K through five we are going to with, no, four, with fifth through eight, we will be aligning it with their progressions that they have already, their reading and writing progressions, okay? So in this, what we're gonna do is we're going to do some learning. We're gonna model using the scales created with students like how to use them, the work here. And we'll do some reflection and talking and learning around that and how to be responsive based on what we're seeing with students. Then we're going to do some leadership work on these days. And in this, we're going to study student work. Again, this is safe. And what we know is if we can start studying student work and noticing and naming what students are doing and seeing how they're progressing, um, what that does is that like um, it, oh gosh, it like jump starts it, moves students along that continuum of whatever curricula or whatever content that they're in. So we need to be studying student work all the time. So we wanna study student work we want to look at evidence, like actual work, not numbers, okay? And then think about, like, what are the trends we're seeing? Okay, the data collection 
we'll be doing during this time, super easy, is just collectively as PLCs and teams, we're going to look at our profession proficiency scales and just tally again where students are on the proficiency scale. All right. I know that was a lot, but I wanted to give you just a crystal clear understanding of some of the things that you can do um, on your own and independently. So I hope that you found this video helpful um, or calling us at Compass PD and know that um, you don't always have me, you have people, there are so many people in our organization that are amazing experts in their content and they do this work amazingly, beautifully every day in the districts that they serve. So I hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Have a great day.